You mentioned uh, ER negative, so let me ask you, what's new in the uh, triple negative front? So, I think triple negative breast cancer is perhaps more misunderstood by the general public than any other subtype of breast cancer. And I can't tell you how many women um, seem to think that having triple negative breast cancer is um, the equivalent of a term I don't like to use, but women sometimes use a death sentence. It absolutely is not. And, and having early stage breast cancer, so stage one or stage two breast cancer that is triple negative, does by no means mean that a woman is going to go on and have a recurrence of cancer and, and die of it. Triple negative breast cancer tends to be quite sensitive to chemotherapy and many of these women go on and do well. On the other hand, women who have recurrences of triple negative breast cancer and who have metastatic triple negative breast cancer do have uh, a situation that is often more difficult to treat than other subtypes of breast cancer. The only treatments we have available at this point in time are chemotherapy and chemotherapy plus bevacizumab or Avastin. Um, the HARP inhibitors are very interesting drugs in this setting and they're thought um, perhaps, in particular one of them, is thought to add to the effectiveness of, of chemotherapy. And hopefully that will turn out to be true in the large study that was recently completed that we're waiting for results from. Um, so I, I think that we, we clearly need to make progress in this area. This is now one of our most difficult areas in, to treat. Um, but I think that this is an area where we will learn more about the biology of triple negative breast cancer. We'll learn more about how one woman's tumor is different from another because there's a lot of heterogeneity here, and we're gonna develop better treatments over the next several years. Talking to you, I'm feeling so hopeful. Well, I mean, you know, it, the reality is there are still 40,000 women who die of breast cancer in the United States each year, and about 400,000 women who die of breast cancer worldwide. So there's, there's reason to be to take the problem very seriously, and we have a lot of work to do. On the other hand, the reason to be hopeful is there has just been this explosion of knowledge related to the underlying biology of cancer, and a, a far greater ability to begin to translate that to the clinic. And so, you know, these next three years, five years, eight years, 10 years are gonna be amazing years, um, but it's gonna take a lot of hard work and a lot of money and a lot of collaboration between many, many different people. Were there any other stories or, or sorry, sorry uh, uh, studies that you wanted to mention? So I think two last studies that I'll quickly mention. One is a study also from the American College of Surgeons Oncology Group where women with positive sentinel lymph nodes were randomized to a completion node dissection or no further surgery. Again, these are women who had a positive sentinel lymph node for these women, the standard treatment has been to do a completion node dissection. And as you know, many women have great fears uh, around lymph node dissections. Um, the study was not able to complete accrual. It was somewhat underpowered, meaning it didn't really have the numbers we needed to answer the question. That said, through five years of follow-up, there appeared to be no difference whether a woman had a lymph node dissection or whether she didn't. I don't think this defines a new standard of care, but I think it does mean that we can be a little bit more flexible in our approach to patients um, who have a positive sentinel biopsy, particularly if we think that the chance that we're gonna find other lymph nodes is quite small, and particularly if a woman is, is quite fearful of the consequences of a node dissection. And I think that this is something that will not entirely change clinical practice, but will certainly affect clinical practice. And finally, I just want to mention that there is a new chemotherapy drug that has been reported, and that's a drug called aribulin. It's a drug from uh, a sea sponge, mm -hmm. um, and it has been looked at in women who have uh, relatively advanced metastatic breast cancer. And in that setting, it led to a small improvement in progression-free survival or the amount of time that the cancer was under control. And 
a, an improvement in, in overall survival. And I think it's a drug we're going to be hearing more from. I suspect it's one of the last chemotherapy drugs to be developed for breast cancer because our, our right. push is on the targeted therapies. And just to note that it's a, bot a botanical, and you know how patients are always saying, I want something natural. So this is, it's, you know, yes. what, 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 what more could someone want than a drug from the sea sponge?